everyone, welcome to this mini documentary about the making of Center of the Universe. I'm gonna tell you a little bit of the backstory, how I decided to make this album and why and how we made it. And so, first of all, the pandemic was a strange time and you know that we couldn't go out play music as we did before. And there was a lot of online shows and you know, it was uh, it was fun for a while, but then I really, really missed being in the same room as other people. I also missed being in the same room playing with other people. And so when I started planning for the recording of Center of the Universe, one thing that was like a really big goal for me was that I wanted to be in the same room as the other musicians. So last year, um, I was on a tour in the US and I had a show in North Carolina and before me played a really great band, Discount Rothko, uh, which is a duo, Peyton Clifford and Drake Duffer. And I heard them and I was like, wow, they're really great. And so when I started thinking about making my album, they came to mind and I was like, you know, maybe I should invite them to play with me on my new album. So I sent them a message. I said, you guys want to come over to Sweden and record an album with me? And they said, yes. So we flew them over to Sweden. I found this amazing little place in Southern Sweden. It's called Sulegong. And I found it because I'm following a guy that restores old houses on uh, Instagram. And he posted some pictures from this place and, and said that it was like a nature and cultural center. In the, in the darkest forests <laughs> of southern Sweden. And I thought to myself, that, look, that looks really nice. And it seems like a perfect place to go for a week and record an album. And you wouldn't be, you know, disturbed by people, by cars, by stuff going on around you. I mean, we hardly even had cell reception uh, at the house. So I emailed the, the people who own this place. Um, it's like an old village. Uh, that has like been around there since the 1500s and right now the oldest house is from 1811 so I emailed the host there and then I said hey like do you guys rent out your houses like how does it work um, I'm a musician I want to come and record an album and they were like yeah we rent it out but we don't have a studio here so I don't know what are you gonna do and I said don't worry about it I'm gonna bring everything I need so um, in May uh, 2023, uh, we rolled up with our car and uh, packed to the max, I must say, with uh, sound equipment, with Drake and Peyton, uh, me and Jonas, uh, who's holding the camera right now filming, and um, we started building a little studio in the oldest house they had from 1811 in the living room in that house. It's like great old wooden house, you know, old wooden floors and just like a warm, nice sound to it. So um, then the night after uh, my bass player from Sweden, Janne Mannen, uh, came in with his car uh, as he couldn't fit in our car and he had to bring all his gear as well. And then the next day, basically, we started recording the album. And what you're going to see now are clips from that studio that we built and how we were, you know, discussing the songs, how the songs sound. And of course, if you want to hear the full album, you can find that on sophiatalvik.com. Jesus. This is so fucking weird. This camera is all new and it has like a oh. spot and you cannot really open it. Oh, it's like, yeah, and it's like it's not on, it's like inside. And you cannot really remove it either. Brains. <laughs> yeah, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, in the middle of my face. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like I can I almost see video. it. Yeah, right? Like <laughs> <laughs> it's like a trail cam when a, when a bear finds it. <laughs> I feel like I was hearing this one is a little more solitary. Yeah. Yeah. How's the harmony on the, the choruses? What? Like the harmony on the choruses is nice. Yeah, we can try. And we can always do that. You know, we can add your <coughs> right. I'm happy to. Days if you yeah, want. Like I'm you know how to do, to do it. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Sure. 
Okay. Are <laughs> well, y'all ready? Yes. All y'all? Yeah. All y'all? <laughs> Translating for us? Uh, I have a, an idea for it. Like, I was wondering, like, you could do, maybe, you could start, like, with just, like, one note and then come in. Because you kind of almost did that before we started recording the last take. You just like, did, like, a... Oh, yeah, you want to start with, like, a... Oh, just, just like one note, not even like a bullet. Just like okay. A uh, you want like the the like root note or like a different note? Uh, let's try something. Just, just something. Root would be. Winsboro is a song that I wrote in the early days when the pandemic started. Uh, I was in Texas at the time because I had a, a big tour planned. I was going to play South by Southwest and um, I had just released my album Pause of a Bear, which I, I was going to, you know, promote and, uh, and perform all over the U.S. And so I got to the U.S. in February of 2020 and of course you know, I had already heard about a virus, but you know, you didn't know what it was and you didn't think it might be a big deal. Um, but it turned out it was. So one of the last shows that I got to do before everything closed down was in this cute little town, uh, kind of close to Dallas, Texas. It's called Winsboro. And uh, they have a wonderful art center there that I played a couple of times and um, the Winsboro Center for the Arts. And uh, I had a couple of hours before that show started, so I sat down and I tried to gather my thoughts around what was going on uh, because it was such a strange time. Like I was in this serene, beautiful place and then I would look at my phone and I would have all these notifications from like news sites and whatever about a virus and, and everything. And it was just uh, a very strange feeling because everything seemed so normal and still you had this kind of looming feeling that something was going to happen, you know? Um, so I sat down and I wrote this song and it's called Meanwhile in Winsboro. Apple blossoms bloom Spring is coming soon Spring is coming soon So I think the last verse don't disappear completely. Oh. That one that is like be super yeah. soft okay. and you can be even soft. I think um, maybe uh, like the last song that the bass and the accordion should come in like actually on on the first chorus. Then where did they go? Or just before that, like as a building it up. Sure. And then on the last verse, I think. Maybe accordion goes out again, mm -hmm. and then uh, I think you could play a little bit more moving, like some more notes on like the chorus lines. Yeah. And are you just like strumming now, or do you do like I was thinking um, maybe maybe but since I'm like you know I get like a boring rhythm guitar, maybe you could do a little bit more. I can do that. Little I mean I've got it. I've got it kind of up here. Yeah. yeah I've, I've been kind of. Center of the Universe is the title track of my new album, and so uh, <laughs> I um, I was touring through Southern Utah some years ago, and I came to this amazing valley where the Hopi tribes had lived for thousands of years. There was this huge mountainside just filled with petroglyphs, and they had all these different things. So I was like a witness of that great civilization that had been there. Uh, you know, old irrigation systems and stuff like that. You, you could really tell it was like the ideal place uh, to live. And uh, But this tribe, had, all of a sudden it had disappeared. And uh, no one knows really why or where it went. Uh, there are theories about that, it, you know, they might have been assimilated with another tribe or there might have been like uh, 
you know, an illness or something that wiped them out, but no one really knows for sure. But so, if you ask the other Hopi tribes though, they will tell you that, no, they didn't disappear. They went to the center of the universe, and the center of the universe is a tradition in, uh, in the Hopi uh, belief system, and it's sort of like nirvana or a higher state of being, so uh, instead of careful. disappearing, they actually okay. ascended to a better place. Those faces as I roll my groceries out, those smiling faces staring back at me. When I'm touring around in the US, I have a little RV. Uh, it's called Little Chief. Well, I call it Little Chief. It's a Winnebago Micro Warrior from 1989. And so, because I'm touring in an RV, I tend to, you know, go to Walmart quite a lot because it's kind of an easy place to go when you have an RV. They have a big parking lot and they have groceries and they have stuff for the RV. So, um, one thing though that makes me a little bit sad sometimes is like when I walk out through the registers at Walmart, they have this big wall of pictures of missing children and uh, I think that most people they just want to turn a blind eye to that they just want to walk out with their groceries and, and they don't stop to look at those pictures and I can understand that because it's, it's uncomfortable and it's sad who would notice if they took her picture down still a void that no one else can fill that's why I feel like I have to go up and look at those pictures sometimes because I feel like someone has to, you know, even if it's uncomfortable. And, uh, you know, sometimes these pictures could be like 10, 15, 20 years old and they will have this little computer generated picture next to the child's picture of this grown woman or this grown man, how they would look like now. And um, so, one day when I was standing there in front of those pictures, I, I started thinking about that Hopi tribe that disappeared and, you know, how they went to the center of the universe. They didn't disappear, they went to a better place, right? And so I was hoping, you know, kind of thinking about these children and I was hoping that, they, you know, they weren't abducted, they didn't run away, you know, that they also ascended to the center of the universe. The universe where the legends promised him a home was he chosen by a higher power to ascend to sun? This song is kind of supposed to be like a like a 70s kind of peace song feeling to it. Yeah. It's kind of a plan. Um, yeah. Mission accomplished. Are you all in tune? <clears throat> yeah, let's... Yeah, I was gonna say... So Circle of Destruction was the first single from, from the new album and uh, I wrote Circle of Destruction in those uh, first days when Russia invaded Ukraine. Standing at the border with a white flag in your hand Will the peace that we dreamed of ever come? So I live in Berlin, Germany nowadays and uh, so you should know that Berlin is about a 12-hour drive from the Ukraine, which makes it very real for all of us in Europe, you know, it's, it's so close and I just never thought that there would be a war so close to where I live. And um, so I started writing that song in those days, like that first week when Russia invaded Ukraine and, but it, and so it's a song about, you know, it's a song about war and it's a song about people trying to find peace, trying to find a new place to live. For the turn, for a chance of the life they've come to find. So it's not just a song about the people in the Ukraine, it's a song about people trying to find a new place to live and be safe. Behind what we can build up, we will tear down, and the circle of destruction has begun. Standing at the border, waiting for the turn for a chance of the life they've come to find. 
Thank you guys so much for watching the documentary. I hope you enjoyed seeing all those slow things that we were doing in the studio. I hope you like the songs. I hope you like the new album. If you do, please share it with your friends and family uh, on your social media, as a CD, to as a gift, you know, whatever you want. Um, and um, go and find it on sophiatalvik.com and uh, or your preferred streaming sites. So thank you guys so much for watching. The billboards tell you one thing, that you can't make up your mind. There's an urge to deceive that's born in the sun. What we can build up 